Hey, Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom here, and I want to help you with something. If you're working on chords and your ability to make chords quickly, and it's just it's it's not really coming to you, I want to give you a um, a bit of a trick that might help you a little bit in practicing your chords to make them smoother and to make them faster and to make them more accurate. Uh, it's a technique that I refer to as bouncing. And basically, let me set up the, the, the situation here. When I first started learning how to play guitar, I had a book that I was learning from. And let's just say I was working on D, for instance. So I'm learning how to play the D chord. So with the book, what I would do is I would make this D chord and then I would strum all these various patterns and things. Um, and then when I went back to, to practice again, you know, later the day or the next day or whatever it, what it, whatever it was, um, it seemed like my chords weren't getting any faster. And somewhere along the line, I started realizing that I really, what I needed to do was I needed to separate practicing my strumming and practicing my chording separately before I started worrying about trying to put them together. So as I started trying to focus more on what I was doing with my chording hand, I came up with a technique that I refer to as bouncing. And basically what it is, is you're training your hand um, with muscle memory, right? Because what happens a lot of times when people make chords, you know, you'll be playing something and you want to move to the next chord, so you go, you kind of stop and make that chord and you keep strumming, you know, that sort of thing. And the problem is, is there's nothing wrong with that, but, but it makes it difficult if you're actually trying to play along with a song or, um, you know, you're trying to play with other people. You might be in a guitar class or something like that. And... Um, Let's, let's try and fix that. So what I want to do is I want to show you what bouncing is. So if you know what a D chord is, go ahead and make a D chord with me, okay? We're just going to use that as our example. So let's say, for instance, this D chord is very difficult for me to do. It's, it's, it's a hard shape for me to make. Uh, and again, this goes for any chord. It doesn't make any difference. But So what I need to do is I need to just isolate this hand and try and practice uh, muscle memory. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend like my fingers are super glued into this D shape. I am pretending like my fingers are super glued, okay? So I'm going to lift them up off the neck, off the strings of the guitar, but I'm going to keep the D shape. I'm going to retain the D shape with the muscles of my fingers. And I'm going to hold it up here in the air for a little bit, and then I'm going to set it back down exactly where it was before. So I pick it up and then I set it back down and I pick it up and then I set it back down. And while I'm doing this, I am concentrating on what it looks like in my head and what it looks like with my eyes. I know oftentimes when we first start learning how to play, there's this weird unwritten rule that we're not supposed to look at the guitar when we play. What else is there to look at, right? You should totally be looking at your guitar when you first start learning how to do this because you want to see this angle, you want to see those fingers, you want to see this arm, you want to see this whole picture in your brain when you're learning how to play. So your first goal should not be to stop looking at your guitar. Okay, that's what I call rock star syndrome. That's not your first goal. That's going to happen somewhere along the line naturally. Just like when you walk, you probably don't stare at your feet anymore. <laughs> when you were a toddler, you probably did. I have kids, I remember them running into, you know, the table or whatever because they're staring at their feet. That will come in time. That's not the point. The point is look at this chord. Visualize this chord, okay? Absorb everything about what it looks like and then practice picking it up and holding those fingers and then setting it back down. Now there's not a certain amount of time to hold your fingers in the air. There's not a certain amount of speed to pick your fingers up and set them back down. That's not the point. The point is to train your fingers. When your fingers are on the strings, you're done. They're, they can relax. But when they're in the air, you have to hold those muscles steady to keep that shape. So the work isn't so much, you know, the end result is when you get to the strings. The actual work is when they're up in the air. So really, the longer you can stay in the air, the better. You know, if you can lift it up and hold it there for a couple of seconds and then set it back down, that's awesome. But when you set it back down, make sure they go to the right strings and make sure they go to the right spot in the fret that you want as well right? So it's not a speed technique. It's not how fast you can do it. It's how well you can do it. That's what you're looking for. Okay, so that's what bouncing is. The next step of bouncing is as you get more comfortable with, with whatever chord you're working on, right? You pick it up, you hold it, you set it back down over and over and over. The next thing to do is to take your hand and start with nothing, like set it on your, on your leg or something like that so your fingers aren't making the shape. 
and then think to yourself, okay, now I'm going to make that D chord. So you pick it up and you create the shape while you're moving and then you set that shape down. So if I want a D, I pick it up, I pick my hand up and I create the D shape while I'm in, in the air moving. So by the time I get there, I can set that whole shape down. I don't have to go one, two, three. Again, you know, if I want to move to G, people do this sort of thing sometimes. And I used to do the same thing, you know, where we're making it while we're already there, where we want to be strumming it already, but we're still creating the chord. Well, that's where bouncing is so great because you can train yourself to make that chord in one movement. Boom, right? If I want G, I lift up, I make the G shape, and then I set it down. Or if I want E minor, I lift up, I make the E minor shape, and then I set it down. So bouncing is just a really great uh, practice technique for you to get faster at your chords, more comfortable with the chord shape itself, and just make the whole process sound smoother, right? Make all your chords sound better because you, you really learn where they are. And it takes the stress off because that way you can get back to thinking about what you're doing with your strumming hand or whatever else might be going on. You don't have to spend all of your brain power just concentrating on what chord shape to make.